Welcome back to Train Signals VMware vSphere 5 training. You're watching ESXi Firewall Lesson. So today in the technology world, security is one of the most important topics around. And in the virtualization industry and world specifically, security is a big issue. Now whether we like it or not, and contrary to popular belief, the use of virtualization increases the risk of security. VMware is well aware of that and is very, very security conscious. That's why you'll see that most or all of the VMware products are very, very high on security, specifically when it comes to vSphere and ESXi in particular. That's why ESXi, you know, ESX was removed and now you have ESXi which has a smaller footprint, so on and so forth. To increase the level of security and awareness within its products, VMware now introduces the concept of an ESXi firewall. So what we want to do in this lesson is focus on ESXi Firewall. We're going to start off by talking about, well, what is ESXi Firewall? How do I define it? We're going to talk about the configuration files, how you configure it, so to speak. How do you add rule sets to this particular firewall? What is the service behavior like? What, you know, does it come up automatically started? Does it come up? What does the service do when it comes up? Then we're going to talk about the ESXi shell firewall configuration. It's going to be a fun lesson, so let's go ahead and get started. In a nutshell, if I was to define ESXi Firewall, I would say that ESXi Firewall is a service-oriented stateless firewall used to protect the management interface of ESXi. So again, you have to understand what ESX Firewall, ESXi Firewall is built for. It's not built to protect the whole of the host with all the virtual machines that are running on it and everything like that. It was built specifically to control and secure the management interface of ESXi. Remember, there's other products that VMware has that take care of application firewall, the edge, antivirus, and malware. All of those come under the umbrella of the vShield family, if I can say, of, of VMware products. So again, the ESXi firewall is very specific to the management interface of ESXi. Furthermore, the firewall can be configured either from a GUI, which I prefer, or you can also configure it uh, using command line using ESX CLI. From a configuration files perspective, there's two configuration files that you should be aware of, right? So there's the rule set configuration files, and then there's the service configuration files. The service configuration files will define all the services that can come up and how you can configure those, and the rule set will configure the rules by which you can get access to certain services or open ports and stuff like that. So you, know, you have two types of uh, configuration files that you have to be aware of. From a rule set perspective, in order for you to find the particular rule set if you wanted to add things to that rule set it is available in the Etsy VMware firewall directory and in order for you to construct the file these are the different variables that you have here that will make up the construct of this particular rule set and next to each of them there's a quick um, explanation of what each of these uh, values does for example if you had more than one uh, service here you can add um, you can add a numerical value to it so that you can identify the different services and so that the rule set understands that there are m multiple uh, services. Otherwise, you can just use uh, the following uh, sort of tags to say you know if this is the only service that you had. So these are this is what defines the different values that you have here in different options. Now let me give you an example of what a rule set configuration file looks like and how to configure it. So you'll see um, how we put the, the values or the options in the earlier table in a single configuration file. And this example is taken right out of the admin guide uh, that we borrowed that from VMware. But I just want to give you an example of how this particular file is constructed just in case uh, you're one of those that wants to do everything from command line, wants to use these configuration files to configure ESXi firewall. Now from a service behavior perspective, you can set the service to start automatically if any ports are open and stop it when all ports are closed. So maybe there is a particular service that you only want that service to you know, turn on when the port for that particular service is, has been requested and you open the port thereby the service starts. When, the, when you close the port, the service also turns off or it gets disabled. You can obviously start and stop with the host. So you, know, you reboot the host, services start, you shut down the host, services stop, so it comes up and down with the host, or you can start and stop, uh, start the services manually. So these are the three options that you have available for you from a services behavior perspective. 
Now, from an ESXi shell firewall configuration perspective, for those of you that don't want to configure ESXi from the GUI, that want to go through shell, that want to configure it from command line, these are the different commands that you can use against the firewall in order for you to configure it. Now, there's a bunch of commands here with a, you know, a description that I've also put on, on the screen for you guys in case you wanted to configure your firewall. Uh, from uh, from command line. What we're going to do is we're going to use the GUI and I'm going to show you how to get into through the GUI and configure it which will make it a little easier but again if you want to script anything or if there's anything in particular uh, where you prefer to use command line then I've made that available as well. Alright so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to switch over to our virtual center and I'm going to show you how to configure ESXi firewall through the GUI. All right, so from the home screen of our virtual center server, I'm going to click on hosts and clusters. And then I'm going to select one of the ESX hosts that I have access to, and then I'm going to go to the configuration tab. On the left down here, I'm going to click on security profile. And you'll see that you have the firewall that's listed right, right away, so you'll see that uh, immediately. You have the security profile up there, and you also have the lockdown, so if you want to lock down ESXi, you have lockdown mode down here where you can enable that as well. But uh, first of all, if you're looking at the firewall, it gives you a quick summary, a quick snapshot of what's going on. It gives you the names of the services, uh, which ports, um, and what's happening here from a, um, uh, if they're open or closed, well, what's going on exactly. Uh, these are obviously the incoming connections, and these are the outgoing connections. Um, where it says um, all here, it means it's accepting um, all incoming connections, so you're not tying it to any particular IP address. Whereas if you'll notice what's going on down here, uh, this particular uh, NFS client is only accepting traffic outgoing um, against this particular IP address, which is uh, the NFS client. So you can configure these different uh, services to have different options. So in order to configure the firewall, we're going to click on Properties. And as soon as you come in here, you have a couple of different options. First of all, you'll see how it's configured by default. And you'll see that you also have two tabs whereby you can configure it. If you click on the firewall tab, your options are to allow connections from any uh, IP address, or you can limit it so it's only accepting connections from a particular IP address that you select. So again, this, is, this allows you to lock it down even more um, if you wanted to. You can also select a range of IP addresses or multiple IP addresses that you allow uh, connection connectivity from. And as you can see down here in the example, you can use commas to separate those IP addresses. So again, for now, we're going to keep it at, at the defaults. If you click on options, if this particular service has any associated options with it, you can configure those as well. So for example, for now, for me, uh, it allows me to start and stop uh, this particular service if any ports are open, this is the same thing we spoke about during the presentation. So you have three default behaviors here, right? You can start and stop it manually, which is the default for this service. You can start and stop it with the host. Or you can start automatically when ports that it's, it, it's requesting access to the service are, are configured or are being accessed, it'll open it. And when they're not being accessed or requested, it closes it. Now, if we select a different kind of um, service here, you'll see that, for example, DNS client, I don't have any options for the DNS client, but I do have firewall uh, configurations that I can configure it. So I can, again, allow it uh, from any address, IP address, or I can lock it down. Let's take another example here with the vSphere agent or vCenter agent. If I click on um, the, the options, again, you see these same options where I can start and stop it. Um, you can obviously, you know, force it to start and stop here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on cancel. And let's find another agent. Let's take a look at the NTP client here and let's go into its options. Now you'll see with the NTP options, you have the ability to also configure it uh, from here. So sometimes the services will allow you to configure those services right away from within the firewall. You can configure it, start it, stop it, do whatever you need to do with it. And then um, also configure the particular rules uh, for the firewall as well. So that's all there is to it really from a, an ESXi firewall perspective. Um, it's very easy, very straightforward, very simple, especially um, you know, considering the GUI, there's really um, not very confusing. You should always make sure you know which services are being started on your, in your environment, which ports they're using, and if you've configured any particular IP addresses, it's very important to know which IP addresses you've configured, especially if you're troubleshooting. This is going to come in handy. This is one of the areas that I strongly recommend that you take a look at right away if you're troubleshooting, if certain things aren't working, just to make sure that you aren't the, the culprit. You're not the one that created the problem by locking down the ESXi firewall uh, too much.
And with that, we're going to go ahead and switch back to our presentation and recap what we've learned. So we started off by talking about the ESXi firewall. We defined it, and we went through the fact that uh, the ESXi firewall, first of all, is a new feature with vSphere 5, and it is a stateless service-oriented firewall that you can configure either from command line using ESX uh, CLI or from the vSphere GUI as I just finished showing you guys. We talked about the, the, the different configuration files that you have access to. You have access to the rule set configuration files, and you have access to the services uh, configuration files as well. We talked about the different rule set ads. Um, I, I showed you the location where you can find the rule set ad file, and I showed you the different options and values that you can assign to them. And we also went through an example of how to construct that particular file if you wanted to. We then talked about the services behavior, or the service behavior. How, do, how does the service start and stop? So we talked about the fact that it can start when uh, one of its ports is being requested, so it starts the service, and when there's no traffic or the port isn't being requested, the service stopped. Uh, we talked about the fact that it can start and stop with the host on startup, when the host starts up or shuts down. And we also talked about the fact that you can start it and stop it manually. And then finally, we talked about the ESXi shell firewall configuration, and I showed you the different commands that you can use from a shell perspective to configure ESXi, and it's all, or the ESXi firewall, and it's all done through ESX CLI. With that, I hope this lesson was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.